Hi and welcome to the Mjöndal and Elite Serien 2020 season preview brought to you by Nordic Football Podcast. My name is Steve Witt. So let's get into Mjöndal who just survived by the skin of their teeth last year in the Elite Serien um, with a um, final day victory 1-0. Um, otherwise they would have got relegated. So um, let's talk about them. They've got a big rivalry with Strums and Gutsa. Um, and uh, from the city of Draman and they're not too far apart it's a big geographical one so watch out for those two fixtures really spicy got a nice shirt here um, which uh, I know some people have commented on this year as being quite a classy one um, they're playing at the Consto Arena at the minute quite a small stadium but it does the, the fans really get on the in, in the players on the backs of the players quite enclosed and can generate a big atmosphere and I think it's a big asset for Mjöndal in there they've got a top manager in Vegar Hansen so um, I'm predicting them 14th, which is the relegation playoff match. I think they're going to struggle this year, but um, the manager will get the absolute best out of them. So um, yeah, let's go into a bit more detail with the Mjöndal. Like I say, they are located um, on the western side uh, of Norway and uh, near Drammen. Um, and uh, ignore that; it's the it's put the Isaacson Stadium there. It's changed name so many times. Uh, it's the Consto Arena now, whatever. Anyway, that is their stadium. Um, it's an interesting one. They've done a few building works around it recently as well. So, uh, without further ado, let's move on to some more practical matters in terms of fixtures and fantasy. But um, they don't have a good and easy start at all. I mean, look, they're one of the poorer teams here. You kind of expect that. But, um, yeah, I mean, they're away at Mulder, they're away at Viking in this run. They've got games against Starbeck, Sarsborg. Christian Sun and uh, all of a sudden, which I mean, look, maybe there's a chance for some points in there. You know, it's not a shocking first six by all means, but it's not easy either. You would like them to have sort of, I mean, Christian Sun home maybe is, is a good one to have there, and Sarsborg at home might not be the hardest either. This is my own personal opinion in terms of how hard and easy the fixtures are. So, um, what are you going to get from me and Darlin then? Well, you're going to get a team that will, I mean, I put 4 4. 1-1 one, as one their main formation there, but that can change quite a lot. You might see a 4-3-3, three, three. you might even see 5 at the back. The manager has no real set system. He's, uh, he adapts his tactics specifically to the teams um, that he's going to face. But generally, you're probably going to see more compact, quite defensive-minded sort of system. Uh, he knows to work within his limits. and uh, The defence is probably slightly underrated, uh, to be brutally honest with you. Look, some of their players, the goalkeeper looks like it's going to be Makan is going to start. So if you want a cheap keeper, maybe you could look at him, but I think there's probably better cheap keepers like the guy at Mira at Strums Gutze, for example. Um, Solholm Johansson scored a lot of fantasy points last year, mostly because he's a huge, huge threat from set pieces. And that's what Mjern Dahlen are. They're a massive threat from uh, dead ball situations, corners, free kicks, etc., long throws. They've got big, tall guys in there who can do it. Um, so if you get, but are you, do you really want to pay 5.5 million for a defender in a team that's not expected to keep that many clean sheets? You're relying on him scoring goals, which I'm never a great fan of doing. I mean, they're not going to be that bad in terms of conceding goals, me and Darlan, but at the same time, I'm not expecting that many shutouts, you know. Um, the rest of the team, probably Tony Brockman is the probably the top option here because he's on the penalties. He has that ability to sort of get on the into the box and, um, you know, time his run and, and get out on the end of some crosses and, and balls in. So, um, you know, Brockman's on um, set pieces. Sometimes he'll take set pieces as well. Definitely penalties. He has a good record from the spot. So he's the top option from the end, darling, if you want to risk uh, something on him. But I just don't think they're, they're going to score that many goals. Um, striker options. I mean, they've got... I don't even know who's going to start up front. Maybe new signing Shoibu from um, Augustin could get a few minutes. Lee Seth as well, they're going to hope one of these youngsters comes good up from I don't really see the strikers doing too much for me and Darlin. Um apart from that there's not too much else to write home about um, with this team I think um, it'd be limited someone will obviously have a good year fantasy wise but um, by and large it's going to be a struggling campaign for me and Darlin, so don't expect too much fr from them um, there's a couple of players like I mentioned there, if you really like a, a, a goal scoring centre back from set pieces then Johansson's your guy here and Tony Brockman maybe you could look at him but when the fixtures get easier you know when they face the likes of Sanderfield start teams like that um, then maybe you could look at some of the Mjöndal players but at the moment I don't think I'm going to include any of them in my squad but uh, 
well, we shall see. Um, that's the end of this video. Um, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it gave you a good insight into me and darling. And as always, I would love you to hit that like button and love you to subscribe to the channel. Keep up to date with the content. And uh, from this episode uh, until the next time we do a uh, team guide, it's goodbye.